Don't get all crazy. Give us another the man, bro. How you doing? Okay. Right there is good, guys. Up, Don't get too crazy. Hey, what do you know? Y'all about... stink, man. Take a step back. One of y'all smelling. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about your opponent's style wise? Um, just uh, we'll see. We'll see. I know. You know, as far as the mentality goes, uh, this is his, this is his chance. You know, so I know he's coming to put it all on the line. You know, he, I know he really wants to get that dub and prove himself. Um, but you know, uh, Coach Brad, he made a great point, and that's uh, you know, if he truly believed in his skills, if he truly believed that he belonged here, that he wouldn't wait until he was 28 no to make that jump. He wouldn't wait until he was 31, 32 years old to make that jump. You know, if he believed in his skills, his skills as much as he does talk. You know, actions speak louder than words. He would, he would have made that jump already. And um, you know, obviously. You guys know I believe in my school. That's why I took the jump with 17 fights, and uh, even uh, in the Canelo and the David fight, obviously I fell short, but the self belief was there. That's why I took the fights. And um, the man who truly believes in himself, you know, is usually the guy that's going to come out on top. So I expect to, you know, get my hand raised in the on the 14th. Caleb, uh, you know, in the past when you when you fought a guy who's maybe been perceived as overmatched, Vincent Feigen, Bruce, Mike Lee, even Anthony Durrell was a champion in the past. Uh, you, you've kind of made it look like they, they shouldn't have been in the ring with you that night. Is this the same outcome with Trevor McCombie in this one? Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. That's the plan. You know, show him uh, that there's levels. And, um, you know, also take it personal that, you know, he's waited this long to step up. And uh, he chooses me to be his first step-up fight. Obviously, he feels like he can beat me by doing so, by doing that. And, you know, obviously, I take uh, I take that personally. You know, I take offense to that. So. I plan on showing them. What do you think of uh, kind of the juxtaposition the fans drew between you two guys at the presser? It's like Caleb's the, the, the white dude down with La Raza. He fight into the cookout. This guy's the, the MAGA Middle America guy. Just what do you think of that kind of selling the fight and people drawing that juxtaposition? I don't think much of it. I don't worry about stuff like that. You know, I don't care about stuff like that. Uh, the fans, the media, you know, they do what they do. I'm going to do what I do. And that's focus on training, focus on fighting, and, you know, whooping ass. So. What's your thoughts on Ryan pleading guilty to the commission for taking PEDs? And after all that stuff he said on the internet, after all that stuff in his own defense, he pled guilty. Yeah, I spoke, you know, with Marcos uh, a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, I just find it peculiar that, you know, if you're, you know, he's been swearing up and down that he's innocent, you know, then, and if it's so easy to prove, you know, obviously one would go to court and prove that other than, you know, rather than, you know, cough up $1.5 million and take a one-year ban. People were cooking me in the comments because I said two years instead of one. Yeah, but it's just, it was a slight, regardless, little, you know, yeah. uh, why would you take that ban? And I'm not coughing up that much money. I, regardless of how much money you have, I ain't coughing up that much money. You know, especially if I know I'm innocent and it's so easy to prove. So, but he took the other route. So I feel like that's not a lot. Do you think uh, you and Tre I don't know? Like, do you feel like outside of this, Trevor could be someone that like? Oh yeah, like. I could relate to that guy. Like, I could be friends with that guy. Or, like, is there something about him that's, like, really off-putting to you? No, we, we couldn't be, uh, I don't think, good friends because, um, one, he's a cheater. Mm. You know, he's been um, calling me a quitter. And, you know, if any of you guys can raise your hand, of, you know, seeing me quit in, in a fight or anything in life, you know, raise your hand and let me know because, you know, if it's one thing I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a cheater either. And he, he's a cheater. He, he's been um, caught, he's been busted, he's been suspended, he's been fined for not only uh, taking steroids, but also for getting a legal IV after the weigh-ins. And um, so, you know, that's not my type of guy. So we brought that up with him about you know what happened, and he said, oh, it was a tainted supplement, like people, that happened like 10 years ago, people need to stop you know, bringing that up. Of course, because he wants, he just said it. No, you just said it, Marcos. Wait, what did I say? No, you said it. I said what? <laughs> you said it. Yeah, everybody heard Marcos. <laughs> Ten years. But, uh, Ten years. Yeah, I mean, I just want to vibe with somebody like that. So, mm -hmm. you know. He also said uh, he feels like, you know, uh, he, he talked about the convo you and Canelo had in, in the, towards the end of the fight, and he feels like he could break your will. And that that's what he thinks he's gonna do is break your will. What, what do you based off the conversation that me and Canelo had after the fight? That was a, a, a yeah. during the fight. Yeah. Oh, during the fight. Yeah. So and then, I feel like there's a huge uh, misconception on that conversation. I feel like a lot of people feel like I was asking Canelo if I'm good, but I'm being sarcastic. You know, like I feel like 
in that fight, a lot of people didn't expect me to have really any success. And up until that point, I felt like I had had quite a bit of success. That was a really close fight. And so, and another thing too is um, after the first couple rounds, I would look over, I see what Canelo would be standing up uh, during the rest. I'm like, oh yeah, he's trying to do me like he did um, Chavez Jr. I'm like, oh, oh no. Nah. And then a couple rounds later, I look over, he's, using the, he's sitting down on a stool. I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> you know, you thought it was going to be a cakewalk, but it's not going to be that. So when I'm fighting, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty good, huh? I'm pretty good, huh? Like, I'm better than you thought. I'm doing better than, I, than you thought. I'm doing better than everybody thought. And some silly people thought, I'm like, I'm really asking them, am I good? So, but if that's how he feels, cool. We'll have, we can have a conversation during the fight. Andre recently called you out uh, to fight. What's your thoughts on that? Who? Uh, 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 Demetrius Andrew. Yeah, Andre. Uh, I've been getting caught out by a lot of people uh, as of uh, late, so, you know, get in line. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people buy your merch at? What's the website? Uh, well, as of now, it's been anchorbelinga.com, but uh, we, we sold out, you know, basically first day, so. Uh, revenge store. Revenge, revenge store. Yes, sir. So, you have to wait till the next drop. You got to be on it. After the fight, who are you talking at 168? Um... It'd be nice to get the, uh, I feel like the Charlo fight is a great fight. You know, I, he's been back in the gym training. You know, hopefully he's got his head, his head on straight, and that would be a big fight for boxing. So we'll see. How do you, Caleb, how do you foresee, like, this next year, if you were your own matchmaker, and if you could make these fights, who would be the next series, of, the next three series of fights for you? I want to fight with Charlie. I want to wrestle him. <laughs> me, me and Charlie next. Yeah. <laughs>